video, we are not putting floors in this truck. We did that last week. Now, because I love just rust and cutting rust and sheet metal work and building floors, putting in new floors, uh, this week we get to put some floors in the old wagon. The dragon wagon, nagging wagon. She's getting some floors. The floors of the shop are getting soaked because it's raining. But I wanted to pull this back in here real quick so I could show you all this floor. As you can see, we coated that thing uh, with some, uh, what's that crap called by the sweet patina? Mm, she's the blackout rust preventative gloss black coating. Uh, you can brush the stuff on. That's what we did actually. You can uh, roll it on. You can spray it on. Good stuff. Gets hard as a rock. Eventually that'll be a second channel video because we're just going to do some uh, rattle can bed liner stuff in here too. Uh, I just ain't got time this week. I just want to show you all how those kind of turned out there and encourage you to go watch that video if you ain't seen it yet. Also, when trucks are on my mind, I have an announcement. I have an announcement that's going to make some of you happy and mad at the same time. I ain't working on trucks anymore. I'm getting rid of every one of them. Just playing. Uh, I'd have like no vehicle. All I'd have is a tow roll if I did that. April 15th, there's a truck show called Gathering of the Trucks. Trucks gather around. Y'all get over here now. I can't remember what this damn thing was called. The truck gathering. One moment, please. There it is. The truck gathering. It will be April 15th in Norman, Oklahoma. Norman. Ooh. I plan on taking four or five vehicles. Uh, we'll have a booth set up doing merchandise. And as of right now, this is the only car show I plan on doing this year. I have people helping me run the booth. That way I can do visitating, hand kissing, baby shaking. Visitating, hand shaking, baby kissing. Neither one of them sound very promising. Now here's what's going to upset some folks because you're going to want to bring your vehicle out. And after I sponsored this and got uh, spots for my vehicles, I think the show already sold out. As in, there's no more entries if you're wanting to bring a vehicle. Uh, but obviously, people are still welcome to drive their vehicles to the park, uh, park somewhere, and then come to the show and spectating's free. Now, with that announcement out the way, we got to get this truck out the way, and then we got to get that wagon into play. Have I mentioned how much I do not enjoy being in rain? When I backed up, I serpentined out of here, but I was all over the place. It's all the torque that baby makes. She's just hard to control. Now this wagon, I had to have help to shove it out of here, so I doubt shoving it in here is gonna go too much better. Woo! Oh, ow. I don't know why this wagon's so heavy. Because it's back when they made real cars with real steel. About threw up, but I got it to move some. This is miserable. Shove her in as I shove it in, the booty goes out of way. Then I can pull it as I pull it, the front end goes out of way. Oh man. A turn in motion will stay in motion. That's basic calculus. Now last week on the International B100, uh, we just took some flat 18 gauge. We made them with the equipment in the shop. The reason we did that was because I was waiting on a package and guess what? A package arrived. I like how I look back like if I was actually pointing at it like I couldn't be pointing at it. It's taking up the whole damn picture frame I'm sure. We were waiting on a heavy parcel. Yeah, you wanna lift her carefully. And now luckily the parcel arrived. Now speaking of packages, parcels, whatever, uh, last week on the website, we restocked some hoodies, 
sitting on your ass t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, international shirts. And uh, yeah, we appreciate all the support there. Be sure to check out www.puddingsfabshop.com to see what we have in stock today. And now let's see what's in here. Old Cardboard Slicer 750 model makes quick work of any large package. Dang! Full floor! Got excited for a second. <laughs> I'm excited because I ain't got to make this by hand. I definitely couldn't make that by hand. We would have made something that went in there, but it wouldn't look like factory. Do y'all hear that dog? It sounds like someone's taking that Sawzall to it. And don't worry, that dog literally does that all the time. So I don't think it's uh, in harm or danger. That thing just likes trying to hit them high notes and it ain't very good at it. Anyhow, we got a left side and a right side. I elected to get the one that's in two pieces. You can get the one that's one big piece and has all the braces attached to the bottom. Uh, I think it would have been about $800 more or something. It, it was quite a bit. I figure working two halves would be easier. Oh, so there's one half. What is this stuff made out of paper thin? What we got here, 22 gauge? Oh, passenger side there. I noticed they stamped the center where you can overlap it, where you could just drill holes here and spot weld if we wanted. We'll see how she's all gonna fit up before we determine all that, okay? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So you can see they actually start to come up the tow board some. There's a, a seam there from the factory. Then that should kick up to right at the cross member for the rear seat area back here. Which is practically uh, everything we need. Luckily at that cross member back, everything's good in this wagon. So this right here should eliminate all of our uh, rust rotten problems. Just take them rust rotten problems and whoop, toss them right out the window. I just seen you drive by, Richard Abney. You're not smooth. Uh-huh. I may not got my glasses on, but you know. Hey, one one of my eyeballs is long distance, and one's uh, for like the close close distance or whatever, nearsighted. So if you give me enough to adjust whichever one sees far, I'll, I'll lock in on you. We gotta get these out the way, where we can get our seats out the way, and you get the box out the way. This may quite possibly be the best creeper we've ever had. I'd say we're gonna save her for a rainy day, but it's already raining. So we'll just save it. Now last week to clear up some room in here, I stuffed this thing full back of its pieces where we get the international in here. Now we gotta undo what we did. When we end up moving out to our new shop at some point this year, we won't have problems like this anymore. It's gonna be beautiful. Holy crap, I forgot how heavy that one is. God bless. It's all fun and games around here until you gotta pick up that back seat. A little piece of trim came off of somewhere. Came off of down there. That's where it came from. These floors came from hell by the looks of them. And that's where we're about to send them back to. I think on this one we're gonna end up using our plasma cutter to rough cut that out. Here's that cross member I was saying we gotta come back to. Before we fire up the old hypertherm and take her to Plasma City. I'm gonna take her down to Plasma City. Cut out these floors that are old and shitty, won't you? Oh, please get your butt gone. That didn't even sound like that song, I know. Uh, we want to look underneath it because I didn't get the floor with braces. I don't even know if we need braces. I should have looked at that before I ordered floors. We'll use the baby creeper to check that. I think they're good because I don't remember seeing braces that look bad. So if they ain't bad, they gotta be good. So right here you can see a floor brace. This is probably gonna spot weld through the top to that brace. And oh, it goes all the way across, don't it? So then looks like we got one here. It does not go all the way across. We got whatever these are, which I'm not terribly worried about, which is good. That side appears to be popping off. So we want to cut this floor out, but we don't want to take our braces out. So we got to be uh, careful with that. We get our fancy lights set up where we can get some illumination in this situation. That don't work, guys. Actually, in today's times, uh, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. 
So one, I need y'all to be able to see, so we need light, but two, we need light where we can see, where maybe we can figure out exactly where these cross members are. Somewhere in there-ish is the first one. What the heck are these? Are these supposed to have our wires in them or something? Because I don't see any. Oh! Yep. We're probably going to have to go around and pull all of our crap like this. Uh, where our floor pans are going to come up to. Pull all this crap out too. I'm going to sit her here in the back. Put that screw back. Whoop. Nice and sloppy. Can't believe that came out of there. Let's go, baby! Oh, she had a sweet sound system in her at one point, didn't she? There's some of the top-notch speaker wiring. You just take that and throw in her hidey hole there. Get that out the front. And we're ready to do the passenger side. I got goggles on for uh, safety purposes. Some of y'all said in the last video, uh, they look like the Willy Wonker's glasses from number two, Willy Wonker. Y'all heard of Willy Wonker and the Chocolate Factory? Well, this is Puddin' Ponker and the Shitbox Factory. Welcome. If you win the golden ticket, you can come visit us here. All we do is build shit boxes. That's it. Oh. Had to get me some feet room. That's just a joke, by the way. Don't be showing up with no damn golden ticket thinking you're going to hang out. I tell you, get out of here. <laughs> and I ain't grumpy, okay? Some of y'all said last time I'm getting grumpy. I ain't grumpy. I just ain't got time to hang out. Too much work to do around here to be hanging out. Be Willy Wonka in the foot up the ass factory. Hey, yo. This light actually has some wiring in it. Now there ain't a whole lot, just enough to do our lights on the back and probably our fuel gauge. Because nowadays you'd have a backup camera, GPS, GPS backup camera, windshield wipers for your backup GPS camera. I get us a marker here and I finished pulling out the rest of the crap up this passenger side. Oh, need to get some tape for our wiring where we can tape it up kind of out the way or something. Whatever this, whatever this wiring's wrapped in is so old and brittle, it's literally just flaking apart. I definitely don't want to be getting in our wiring, so I'm going to kind of just tape it out here, out the way. That should be kind of good for now. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take the old magic marker here. I'm gonna fill up through our uh, Bluetooth floor pans back here for our cross members. And we're gonna kind of ballpark an area around these things where I can uh, be sure not to hit them with the plasma cutter. And you can do all this with a slice and dice or the uh, Sawzall, by the way. I can fill this one with my hand and right here. So, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna give me quite a bit of room to work with. Ooh, I don't think I'm giving me enough room to work with. Okay, I can see a spot weld right here. Use my eagle eye as best as possible to mark out this side too. Ah, I see, says the blind man. Where bolts are for our seat mount here and here, that's one big piece underneath here. So we do not want to slice through that or we'll cut that bracket. 
So hell, what can we cut out of here, huh? Not the greatest lines, but I can see what I'm supposed to be cutting around. And other than that, I'm gonna come a few inches forward to this cross member. And across his back, we're gonna maintain as close to this edge as we can, because we got cross member underneath here we don't wanna hack up. Okay, ready, break. I'm actually not very good with this thing. Mm, if I was an air hose, where would I be? This wagon's like a back talking teenager. She's grounded. Get us plenty of slack in our Terminator shades. That's what I need for goggles, uh, some Willy Wonkers that are dark enough to cut with. If your glasses are missing a, a thing, it ain't no big deal. Just get some of that Gorilla Tape. That stuff works on everything. Probably should have brought a hammer. We're gonna give her a few more amps. And we'll grab a motivator. And some hair and savinators. Yeah, they usually like a couple little love taps. Just a little, little smoochy. That's damn near enough room for me to break dance. Or maybe not quite. You know what's weird? As I cut that back cross member, something caught on fire and it smelled like Bucky's in here. If you've ever been to a Bucky's gas station in Texas, they're huge. They got a smell to them when you walk in there. So I don't know if maybe there's a candied nut head underneath the back and I cooked that baby and it smelled like a Bucky's gas station but I wanted barbecue, little walnut clusters and fudge. I just wanted it all at once. I just don't know why this wagon getting cut with a plasma cutter smelled like that. Oh, pretty close to the rocker right there. Luckily, uh, old rockers on this thing solid. Since it's kind of chilly out today, if you're smart about this, see we just put a little preheat here, then you can sit down. That'll warm, warm up the hiney for you, keep you nice and toasty. And I'm smelling potato wedges. I don't know. sideburn waxing for free. That took longer than I thought it would using the old plasma cut. And we still have a lot of cleanup to do. New morning, new me. Okay, I'm really disappointed in myself that I haven't spent the time to do that. I was just, I noticed it was the, the perfect height, guys. Look, it's like it was meant to be. <laughs> I did not just draw a lady next to a sign that says heavy parcel. The internet's going to cancel me. <laughs> kind of disappointed in my drawing skills. I mean, we got one arm that looks like they arm wrestle for a living. We got the little strong arm over here from like the guy from Scary Movie. Woo, that's heavy. I better use my strong hand. Don't look too close at them toes. Hey, at least we got a cute ankle tattoo. One thing I will say, chest is pretty even. Now, yesterday evening, uh, after we got this rough cut out, we had some running around to do, and uh, yeah, I don't have an air hammer. Well, I have one. I had a 
lended it to someone or I lost it, one of the two. So we went to Harbor Freight and I got the $13 air chisel special right there. And I'm worse than a kid on Christmas morning. I ain't got no patience. So we had to try it out. Uh-huh. We had to start to peel that tuna can open. And yeah, we're going to use this to start peeling off some of them old spot welds. That way we can finish stripping out the floor and uh, get her down to the braces. And I woke up not feeling exactly the greatest. Um, yeah. Anyhow, we're out of paper towels. Hey, <laughs> y'all better be happy I didn't include this on here somewhere. You know what I mean? So my wife had some tea for me. Uh, I'm gonna tell y'all what it's called, then we're gonna leave it alone, okay? Y'all's gonna drop it. I don't even wanna hear about it in the comments, okay? Y'all's worse than little kids out there. I already know it. Someone's gonna comment something I ain't done. It's called throat coat. Did y'all hear me? It's called throat coat. Surely y'all heard that one. <clears throat> it's called throat coat. It's supposed to help you when you're, you know, you're having throat issues, which is what I'm having, so. Sometimes I just feel like I share too much with y'all. That air hammer makes pretty quick work of that. Brought the slice and dice in with us this time so we can uh, trim some of this away. Next, we're gonna take the slice and dice, and I'm gonna try to cut this in half. Now, we just wanna go through the floor layer. We don't wanna go through the cross member layer. So get on your old surgeon hands. It's time to be precise. Pull you. Even though we got that power hammer, that's still some work. Got my goggles all foggy. Standing up like that, hunched over, ain't very lower back friendly neither. Uh oh. So it looks like all this kind of ties together. Uh, I did peel the corner of that brace right there. Oopsie daisy. Uh oh. It's all right. I got the chisel remover right here. You do see our cross member here has got a little rot on it, so we're gonna have to look at that once we get all this off here. Oh yeah, come on baby. Here we go, go, go. Yep, sure enough, got a cross member full of cement, gravel, rust chunks, everything else. Uh, it did get a rocker, just a hair there, and it got just the front of the cross member.
Well, I reckon we're to a point where we could do a little cleaning up on these braces. We're gonna have to hit them with some horsepower. Now, speaking of horsepower, uh, y'all know, I've said it, the reason this wagon's getting a hot rod influence build is because of this right here. That is Mr. Horsepower. I wanna show you guys this where you, you know why or how I know that's Mr. Horsepower, because I've seen it uh, uh, <laughs> for two seconds I developed a stutter apparently. I've seen it a lot in the comments where people keep saying that's the thrush woodpecker. And that's a fair assumption. It is. And I just happened to put a thrush uh, glass back on the half hall. So I just happened to have a thrush sticker and I could see where you're confused. But if you look pretty close you can tell that's not that. Of course this was done in the 60s so there could be a change. That right there is uh, that right there. The eyes match a little closer on this one, but the reason I say it's this one is look at the beak. You see how sharp that thing's pointed? Uh, that's a dead indicator they were trying to do Mr. Horsepower. Now that we do those side by side though, yeah, they, they missed pretty big time on the beak there, didn't they? On the bottom side anyhow. Either way, tomato, tomato. I say it's this one because this one's facing the right way. See, it can't be that one. That one's facing the wrong direction. Which one do y'all think it's supposed to be? Comment down below. We're going to have the, the battle of the woodpeckers. Y'all want her to join? That'd just be battle of the... Pe ne never mind. All right, we're going we're gonna to leave that alone. So riddle me this. Which company use old woodpecker first? I don't know. All I know is we got more work to do on these floors that looked like a woodpecker pecked on. We're going to start off with some wire wheeling action. Dusty. I just squeaked a little too. Can y'all see that cloud of dust in the air? How can you not? <laughs> Get out of here, dust. Next, we're going in with the old flapper attacker. And I actually meant to show y'all something and uh, demonstrate it, and I forgot. Now, I understand some of y'all may not have an air hammer and or a compressor to run one. If you do have a compressor, they're like 13 bucks. It's definitely worth the headache. It'll save you in here. But if you don't have the uh, air compressor, what you need to do is where you can tell where the spot welds are, you can kind of see it through the metal. Like right there, I can see that's a low point. So we know a spot weld's right there. So out here, you would have wanted to found your first one there and a flapper attack that baby and just grind away all that sheet metal and you'll grind away the spot weld. Then you would have got your second one over here, flapper it away, and once they're gone, then you can start to peel that off there. You can try to drill them if you want to drill them. Uh, I've used cutoff wheels on them before to grind it down when I didn't have flap attacks. Just be careful doing that. Uh, you shouldn't really put a side load on a cutoff wheel. I mean, I never do that, guys. You, you don't do that. I've never done that. But if you do got to go the grinding route, uh, I've found for me that the flap attack works best. I promise it's going to take you a lot longer to flap attack it than to air hammer it. And now we're going to go back and flap attack what was left over from the spot welds. Should be a fairly quick, painless process. Just some good old sheet metal work. My absolute favorite. I'm not a sheet metal guy. And one last thing to point out, uh, Chevrolet did not play around with the amount of spot welds they slapped on the, on this little area here. On some cars before I've been on a big old long stretch where you think there'd be like 20 spot welds and there's like three holding something on. Chevrolet was slapping them babies perk near every two inches on these cross members. And that's cause that needed to be strong to support them damn seats that weigh about a buck 20 a piece.
Boy, this fogging BS about has me frustrated. I can either wear a mask, not breathe this crap, or I can wear glasses and not damn see. I don't even know if I just said what I was trying to say. I'm frustrated. After a little grindage action, you can see how that is looking a little bit better than that. Just like everything we're doing on this old wagon, there's a whole nother damn side to knock out. And the last thing we're going to do before moving on to some rush repair here is uh, any of the hard to get areas that the big a uh, grinder couldn't get into. We're gonna use a little impact machine. I got our wire wheel assortment here and we're gonna blast some crud off. I can't believe that one ain't rusted out like that side over there. That's what we're about to hop on next. We've got to figure out what all we got to repair here. See some right there. Obviously, this cross members had better days. And it's got a rocker just a little bit. By golly, this could be a messy job, but someone's got to do it. Got a comment down there. Those things are getting fogged up again like I was wearing a mask or something. <laughs> oh, I don't feel good. I don't know why I'm out here dancing. Just to entertain you guys. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Let's mark out where we think we're gonna need to cut at. And we're gonna lay our Johnson on this thing. I'm gonna put my Johnson right here. My Johnson has about 11 degrees in it and I'm gonna mark uh, where it's sitting at. And the reason I'm doing that, I want to do it before I forget, because we got to cut this cross member off. And with cutting this off, uh, this is going to sag some. Now it is tied to this and tied to this, so I don't think it's going to go crazy. But in theory, when we go to pick that cross member back up, if we get our Johnson reading 11 degrees again, it should be where we need it. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we're going to cut along here. That way we can just completely take this piece off. Mm. Well, my brain just really quit working on what the hell I was doing. Deal with it. Who needs a brain anyhow? Uh, let's just do some cutting here. How's that? Go for a little reload action. Johnson's just flopping everywhere. Not used to having that problem. All right. Now all we need is one of these minus the rust and rot. And I must be getting sick, guys, because I'm so sick and tired of cleaning those braces in there like we've been doing. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to make something out of metal. I just said I was looking forward to some rust repair. That's something wrong with me. We're going to start with notching out that corner uh, where this can slide up there. That edge actually matches up pretty good. 
And then we're gonna do our best we can to kind of trace it around here. And I'm gonna be perfectly clear and perfectly honest, okay? I'm gonna be as clear as them uh, glasses of mine get after wearing a face mask or cutting a mean rug. Who's honking? Keep it down over there. I got a sketcher and a short fuse today, so someone's ass will explode. Whoa. <laughs> Sound like the old mail truck got a few missing teeth. This does not have to be perfect, okay? Uh, close enough will be close enough. Now here's side one, except we need to account for this lip up here. So I got a tape measure right there, but instead uh, we'll just eyeball it. My old eagle eye, it takes pretty good care of me. After a few misses and a few tries, uh, that matches that pretty good. So we'll flip her over and trace the back side. On metal, our choices is 18, eighth inch, or quarter inch. So we're gonna go with quarter inch. We want these strong. Just playing. Uh, that sheet metal ain't very thick. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna use our 18 gauge. Got that traced out. Uh, I need to add a little material in here. I put me a couple notes, that's what that means. And then that right there is where we need to come up because we're gonna add a little uh, lip here to be able to break. Don't forget to add that so when we break it, we got that piece. Give her a few slits and then you can kind of curve her on the top. Wiggle them off there. Next we'll fine tune her a little bit with the old flap attack. Hold that together with some uh, walking pliers. And we can make sure our edges really match there. Two and 13 sixteenths wide until back here kind of has a little jog in it. That puts it out to about three inches wide. Let's take these two to the sheet metal break. And to get that broke, we had to kind of twist on that because uh, we ain't got the fancy break with the fingers, box break or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, but we can tap all that back with our hammers. That looks good enough right here. Does it look good enough from there? And tap that down and kind of straighten out that because we had put too much in it. are matching pretty good. I just found this piece of scrap on the ground. That'll work. Kinda hammer it into place. The top, whoop, broke it over. Uh, we can weld that all up. We'll come down the side here and trim it up. Voila! 
also known as Walla in some countries, but around here in Pop County, it's Walla. Oh yeah, I definitely think we'll be able to make that all work. What do we got right here? The old stops rest. My old aching body just ain't got it in me today. Have I mentioned Gorilla Tape's good for everything? You know, shake it till it flies off, and that's how you know it's ready. Boy, and I'm gonna just coat this stuff on thick. I guarantee you that stuff's on there thick. Well, that be it for tonight, me mateys. I did not make it as far as I would like, but that's what happens when you feel shitty. Me would rather walk the plank than feel like death. Is that a damn hand or a piece of cauliflower? Hell, she'll weld. Took a piece of slag down the air. That'll wake you up uh, quicker than a bowl of Frosted Flakes will. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There's our rough and cut patch. To slide this in, we're going to have to take just a little bit off the end there. After a little cleanup, step one is to weld them back together. Got her attached, uh, all except over here on the rocker. So next we'll lay our Johnson uh, in the same spot over here. Check it for 11 degrees. When we get it to 11 degrees, we'll tack it. That's dead nuts, 11 degrees right there. Well, that's good. Now that I tacked it all in here, I noticed something. Look to this side to see how high our brace is sitting. There should be about a quarter inch gap between there. Ours was pretty well flush. Well, my concern then is, will these floors be able to sit, uh, sit down? And I looked up underneath here, and yeah, that's kind of hitting there. And it's hitting on the back side too. So we definitely want to do something about that. We're going to tack this down in there, give us a relief cut right here where we can tap this over to drop it. Then on the front one on that side, they didn't even come all the way up. So we're going to trim the top off of this and we should be fine after all that. We're going to unbreak that brake, then we're going to uh, break a new brake. Ready, break. I don't know what we're going to do about that gap right there. We ended up with a gap down there. It's all weldable. And all of this welded up fine. Let's put a little bit of crud out of there. You can tell in them welds. We'll grind them down. Uh, and then a little relief cut there. And I cut that and kind of bent it up. And yeah, that'll weld. That'd be good enough to cover up with a floor anyhow. I reckon it's a little better than this being our support. Just check that for fit up and we basically nailed it. We're gonna cut that off there and we're gonna drill some uh, holes down here for some spot welds.
surprise uh, just more welding to do that's all we've been doing Boom, like it never even happened. In fact, it blends so well you can't even tell. Damn identical matching twins. That may be uh, stretching it, but guys, when I cut that out of there yesterday, I didn't even have a plan, okay? I, I cut it out there and just kind of mirrored it and slapped it back in. Uh, you know, if we are restoring a Jag you off or Jay Leno or something, we may have to be a little more picky, but luckily we're in Pot County working on a patinaed. Uh, 1961 hot rod wagon and that's g-u-d good enough <laughs> hell what do we got going on here boy what in the self tapper get your self tappers out we're gonna put a floor in a wagon me and mama had to go to the school to have lunch a little program thing with hot rod and after we got back uh I just kind of wanted to get one side mocked up. I'm pretty impressed with how these are fitting. That there wasn't the greatest, but that side already had problems. The factory floor was separated there. Uh, so I don't know, you know, I don't know. It, it was like that beforehand. What I noticed here though is, see how this rocker is just boxed and solid? You can see where I've started going around here. That's because we're gonna finish taking this out. I already took her off the back here, same thing. Use the little hammer, air hammer, and we've got to flap attack that and grind that down smooth. But these damn pans just literally bloop, plop on down in here. And out of my experience with aftermarket panels and floor stuff like that, these are hands down the best fit ones I've ever seen. Like it literally just sits down in there, fits in there good, guys. So obviously this one's mocked up. So now we're gonna go get that side mocked up. Obviously I ain't been feeling the greatest. So my energy levels has literally been doing that. But right now that sucker's up here. I don't know if it was this drink my wife brought me. But I feel like if any time's go time, go time's right now. My wife said what I need to do is go let my body rest. <laughs> she funny. This would be a good time to be about five foot three and a buck thirty five. About time for the old flapper attacker to play. Like the warriors come out to play. Eh? What's that? You're hungry? <laughs> well, let's let you eat. I found me a comfy spot here. Boy, howdy, we got a ground down all the way around. All right, that's pretty good. We're gonna take that for now. Let's try to squeeze that in there. You can see this needs to come forward. So yeah, just as I suspected, uh, we got a lip up here we can get rid of. And I can't tell what we're gonna have to do in this corner. Y'all know me, I'm just out here guessing at what I'm supposed to be doing. Now I'm just kind of using my best eagle eye here and roughly drew out what I think we need to do. Just real quick, I can already tell we're going to be able to work this into place. I 
this all matches beautifully a real tight gap here gets a little loose in the center then it tightens back up at the trans tunnel I'm sure that has to do with some stamping okay that ain't gonna be just dead nuts perfect but so he's pretty dang close oh there we go as i climbed out on it got some weight on it uh that gap really tightened up out here couple pair of locking pliers down here and i don't see any reason to believe that none of this would weld in just beautifully you can see underneath here they uh they all fit to those cross members really nice even the one uh, we had to rebuild so next i'm gonna crawl around underneath here and trace out our cross members because we gotta pull these pans back out and drill a bunch of holes so we can spot weld this baby in well I'm down here we'll drill our holes for our seat pan yeah i've been working out too much i guess there you go a couple holes to drain some water all right for a little primer action we got the weld through primer that y'all been wanting me to use on this lip it just kind of makes sense because it'll protect it all we left off with spraying that primer uh i took the grinder there's my strong hand again <laughs> i took the grinder to the top of these braces in here and put the weld through primer on them too as you can see right here because when we go to weld through we gotta weld that pan to them that's right i just got this side all in and hot damn does it fit good guys uh super impressed now today between doctor's appointments stuff for the new house and we got senior night that i gotta leave for in an hour ish it's hard to get anything done. Let's get as much done on this other pan as we can. Step number one is to drill a bunch of holes. I don't know if we're gonna have enough time to squeeze this out. Uh, I'm just roughly going every two inches. That's what I decided was gonna work for me. Maybe there's some spot weld written rule somewhere I'm unaware about, but uh, I don't know. Two inches is what we're gonna stick with. And I kind of started measuring off of where one of our self tappers goes and we'll take this out a little bit These ones were going to like a quarter inch the self tapper ones will take out to three sixteenths Where we can fit this thing right back up where it came from We leave at about 530 so you can get a seat before we have to go down to the court. So I'll let you know that We're marked all down that side now we're gonna mark down the center I don't know if I mentioned this but we are just gonna overlap and spot weld the center a lot of times on panels i usually won't do that i'd rather slice it butt weld it smooth it all out but it just kind of seems silly to overlap and spot weld 20 foot of the outside of the pans and then do five foot down the middle and now i'll soon be worried about butt welding it you know this is how they did it here from the factory we're just applying the same technique here Across the front, we kind of just guessed and eagle-eyed that. You know what's funner? Oh, by not having knees or a back that works, just playing. What's funner than uh, drilling a thousand holes? Cleaning up and grinding 1,000 holes. You know what's funner than uh, cleaning up 1,000 holes? Uh, flipping this thing over and drilling another 500. That's right, it's time to lay that thing down, flip it and reverse it. I don't know if I was twerking or having a backstroke. I do apologize y'all had to see that. Uh, underneath here where we traced out our cross members now we got to drill holes underneath uh, where we can spot weld through it to the cross member
I think that's all of it. We're gonna slap this thing right back in this old wagon, uh, lining up our self-tappers from yesterday. I didn't put a lot in this one yesterday, just a couple to make sure I'd index how I wanted it to index. But I'm gonna go around and add a couple more. That way it just holds it down really tight, which it's already close. I mean, look at that fit up down through there. That's all ready to weld. But then as we get to this corner, you can see it's kind of popped up some. So we'll just suck this down with a couple of self-tappers. We'll weld in, skipping around them. Once we get it welded in, we'll pull those out. We'll go back, weld them up, and wham, bam, the floor will be in. Now, if you didn't want to do the overlapping technique and you did want to butt weld that, uh, what I would do is I would not drill those holes, obviously. I would still lay this in here exactly like this, and then I would take my cutoff wheel, and I would follow that edge right there, and I would cut this lip out from underneath there, and then you could butt that up and weld it and make it seamless across there. Just in case some of y'all want to go that direction with yours. You can see what we're doing here. Uh, it's working awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's working awesome, guys. So I'm just gonna carry on all the way around. Whoop. Got her done in all the way around. Uh, well, except for up there. I don't know what in the Gaposaurus we got going on up there, but we'll worry about it after we get this done. And here, we're doing the same thing. We're gonna suck this floor to these cross members and weld her in. And it's the same thing. We just get to work it all around. Sun's out, bum's out. Here we go, guys. Final push on these floors. We're gonna work on that. And honestly, I think all we're gonna have to do is clamp her together with the locking pliers underneath there and weld it up. Kind of clamp them up. I popped inside to make sure she flows nice and smooth. And in between there, we'll give her some left taps to kind of flatten her out. And we're just gonna go across there and weld her up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna finish getting her in, guys. <laughs> I'm definitely better off with that welder in my hand. Let me show you what I mean. I'm trying to use the seam sealer here and that side whipped me. I tried to wipe it out of there and do it again and I didn't do much better. Now this side, I've kind of got my angle figured out finally. Can we do the reverse angle or not? Can we do the reverse angle? Not so much. Boy, I am just not a seam sealer. I'm not made to work the old caulking gun, I reckon. I wish I knew how to make it all pretty, but I don't. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can operate one of these, I mean like clean, 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 uh, you got my full respect. Cause I operate one uh, quite different. Instead of clean, clean, mine's all dirty, dirty. Now this is laying good. Uh, I'm liking this. Maybe I'm the old one hand wonder here. Let me show you my mess ups. Mess up number one, this is a big one. What in the rust rot we got going on there? I thought we had one little hole back here. And then the other day I seen it was in there. That's where our back seat uh, clicks in, by the way. And then some developed right there after doing some wire wheeling and then right there. And yeah, as you can see, uh, we could definitely stand to at least replace this third. As you can also see, 
this overlaps this this probably sits in the exact same way uh, we probably could have took it off that cross member along back here uh, i'm not sure how it comes out the back side but long story short we should have replaced this when we had that out pretty big mistake i should have looked at it closer when i seen it was heavy kind of surface rust uh, but instead i gave it a quick glance and with these incredible eyes that are built into my head apparently i missed that pretty big mess so we're gonna have to address that obviously a quick search on the cellular device yielded results of about 86 dollars i could have got that pan and it probably wouldn't uh, it would have shipped with the other ones all at the same time and yeah we're gonna have to backtrack a little bit but it's okay i'm gonna get her ordered uh, it is what it is mistake number dosi there's our bolts for our seat bracket uh, these ones here i accidentally drilled out the ones up here and that was supposed to be swip swapped so this should have been a bigger hole that should have been a bigger hole and those should have been smaller ones not really a big deal we can waller them out with our carbide bit uh, i just wanted to point it out because i do make mistakes i do make mistakes like uh forgetting to finish up this corner up here as in there's a relief cut there a self tapper in there and uh that edge is clearly popped up it's not really a big deal we need to just hammer it down and weld it but i'm gonna have to let that seam sealer set up before we start doing that uh yeah kind of forgot <laughs> but those are all honest mistakes i would say uh, definitely mistakes you'd run into if uh it's your first time doing one in a particular vehicle uh like this and or if you're feeling like hell most of the week and you're just pushing through you're gonna you're not gonna be probably perfect mistake number four was letting me get a hold of that caulking gun <laughs> uh but guys i was actually really impressed uh with this floor replacement cut out the rough cut hammer out the edges do any outside rest repair you gotta do drop in the new ones i mean it really was kind of that simple if you've got an x-frame car especially if your inner rockers and stuff are good and you've been needing to do uh floors i highly encourage you to to tackle it because it's not that bad pretty impressed the only thing left for me to say is if you like good merchandise if you head over to puddingsfabshop.com uh that directly supports me and my family, so we appreciate y'all support there. We've had hoodies sitting on your ass long sleeve, short sleeve. We had restocked the travel all in the international, and then there's some other odds and ends, all kinds of good stickers and stuff. Uh, so we appreciate your support there. It helps us grow. Uh, it's a large part of the reason that we can go to a bigger shop at some point this year. We're building the house, so thank you guys uh, from me and my family to you. Now, speaking of thank yous and merchandise you'll see that nice hot rod sticker right there that i somehow already scratched now last week hot rod released our very own sticker and you guys were amazing i think those things sold out in like 12 hours which is absolutely awesome uh, i told y'all we're gonna put that in an account for her so hot rod's got a big o huh oh college she's ready to go to college <laughs> hey look at that old truck you see that what do you got to say baby thank you a big old thank you she's ready to go to harvard y'all hear that she's kind of in a mood today and you know what that happens uh when i told her the other day picked her up after school that sold out her mouth dropped and then she's like she's a hoarder okay and like she don't like getting rid of nothing so like as much as she is excited then it turned into that means we got to get rid of them i was like girl you do not need a thousand of your own stickers like we kept a handful of them for her so we only sold 975 uh so she gets a handful of them but guys thank you for uh doing that and supporting uh yeah we're gonna uh we'll, we'll probably let her do another one at some point but it ain't gonna be anytime soon because if y'all just buy her stuff and no one buys my stuff then she's gonna have to start paying the mortgages around here <laughs> that'll teach her about life uh-huh give her she's about to turn nine years old here's your first mortgage baby uh but i'm on the patreon i'm on the instagrammer and uh yeah i'll see you guys next time but do not forget sitting on your ass won't finish your project noticed i missed uh, one two 
three self-tappers over here. Boy, I was just on point this video.